Thank the light, everybody. I am Desmond McNeese. I'm Fatty the Chef, Parched Ale Man on the Bird app. How y'all doing? And he has... I don't know. I don't know what this is. What if? What? What are we doing? What are we watching? What are we listening? Well, we're gonna. It, this is. This is not very good. This is not very good audio. Well, I don't know if it's audio. Is it all audio or is it a video? Okay. Any anybody? It's 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 just audio book. So it's just passing out the audio book. It's about ten minutes. I'm gonna shorten it as I can. Um, we can you know. But the setup is. And Desmond, you haven't met. Um, or maybe you have. How far are you in the books? Have you gotten to where Matt uh, Rand is in Camelin yet? No. Probably not. They're just about ready to leave. Okay, so two rivers. Rand gets to Camelin and he falls off a wall and and meets the royal family children in uh, Elaine, which is very she's very important. Um, she was the one I was talking about last week. Syria Coveney. She is confirmed as Elaine Tricane, and uh, I think that's good casting. And then uh, Gary Beatles is confirmed as Elias. The other two people I had mentioned, they haven't kind of spit out who they are yet. So my best guess is is the. Uh, I think her name's Natasha O'Keefe. It's probably going to be uh, Elida, which she is a red Aes Sedai and um, like advisor to Elaine's mother, the Queen of Andor. So I'm thinking since she's been cast, that one's going to end. She there's a couple other characters that she could be, and I just don't think she has the look enough or the right kind of age and and stuff like that. So I don't think it's her. The other one I think could be Varen Sedai. If it is, I'm going to be really stoked because Varen's a really cool character. And um, I've heard that actress is really cool. And she definitely kind of has the look of Varen that I'm like, yes. Awesome. But um, so the setup for this, it's book three. It's, um, you know, and I, this is where I'm really hoping that Matt can kind of come into his own when he comes back to the show. Because, and this is post his, I believe, third healing. And uh, we'll get into our predictions after about how I think they're going to get here. But I think they should probably get to this in season two, I would think, pretty quickly. Just so they can keep Matt's arc moving and he's in Tarvalin. So I think it's that's how that's going to go. But, um, you know, let's listen to it real quick. We will probably condense our listening to it. And so we can react to it and it won't be just like a bunch of dead air. But I kind of want to watch Desmond's face when he does it. <laughs> Started at 51 seconds. I, that way, because you don't need the setup. It'll shorten it a little bit and then we could stop when it's done. The setup is Matt is post third healing. He's finally healed, but like two days out of it. And he can barely even walk that with that and he's got to eat constantly because when you get healed it just takes your body down and you got to eat and matt's already kind of gaunt and frail looking because of the like possession of the dagger so start at 51 seconds he decides he's gonna go decide he's got how he's how am i gonna get out of the tower and in doing a little recon if you will he comes across the warders practicing and he comes across elaine's uh brother and half brother in the yard and that's where we start I understand you are sick. Are you better now? I'm fine, Matt said. He wondered if he was supposed to call Gowan my lord, or something of the sort. He had refused to call Elaine my lady. Not that she had demanded it, actually. And he decided he would not do her brother better. This is from Matt's point of view, by the way. Did you come to the practice yard to learn the sword? Galad asked. Matt shook his head. I was only out walking. I don't know much about swords. I think I'll put my trust in a good bow or a good quarterstaff. I know how to use those. I don't see I don't see Matt as preferring a bow. That dude is he's a he's a scrap he's too scrappy to lay back and sling arrows from a distance. Well, he just it's like that's what you learn in the two rivers is you learn the bow and you learn the quarterstaff because that's all you have a need for. Yeah, but he also learned how to steal and they didn't teach him that in the two rivers. <laughs> Trust me, this is where I fall in love with Matt. And I know you already like Matt, but you're going to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen Rand in a long time, Matt said quickly. Just for a moment, when he had mentioned Rand, Gowan's look had gained intensity. Light, does he know about Rand? He couldn't. If he did, he'd be denouncing me for a dark friend just for being Rand's friend. But he knows something. Swords aren't the be-all and end-all, you know. I could do fairly well against either of you, I think, if you had a sword and I had my quarterstaff. Gowan's cough was obviously meant to swallow a laugh. Much too politely, he said. He was going to do it because it would be fun. And it might earn some coin. His luck would not even have to be back. I will wager, he said. 
two silver marks to two from each of you that I can beat both of you at once. Just the way I said. You can't have fairer odds than that. There are two of you and one of me, so two to one are fair odds. He almost laughed aloud at the consternation on their faces. Matt, Gowan said, there's no need to make wages. You have been sick. Perhaps we will try this sometime when you are stronger. Thump me once with one of your swords, and I will hand over a silver mark to each of you. If I thump you till you quit, you will give me two each. Are you sure you're up to this, lad? Now I take a close look at you, you ought to be in a sick bed. I'm already out of one, Matt said, and I'm up to it. I have to be. I don't want to lose my two marks. <laughs> Has he proven himself to the reader in battle by now? Or is this kind of when we realize that he's not just <laughs> no, a scrapper? Not really. he's a... No, no, not really. I mean, he's, you know, he's been there uh, and he's fired. Like, you know, he's... He's got a lot of bow. He does a lot of bow action, and then he fucking wields that dagger pretty deadly for a while while he has it. And then as soon as he loses the dagger, he's just like, I don't know. I, he just like he's like, I know I'm good with the quarter staff. I know I can fight. Like whatever. <laughs> and he's just like, and who cares? Whatever. Like what? Well, so what if I get my ass beat? Whatever. He's like that dog where he knocks over the trash. He's like, oh, I'm gonna get spanked, but man, there's some fucking chicken mm, wings in there, bro. Ribs. I got this. <laughs> mm, delicious. Does he have the coin? If he loses? What's that? Does he have the coin if no. he loses? Do you mean the one that Moraine gave him? Well, no. I mean, if he loses this bet, could he pay them? Yeah, he's got, he's been gambling. So he's got, he's got a couple of marks or whatever. To- I mean, I know where this is leading, but I'm just wondering what we don't have, we don't have 50 bucks, dude. We don't have 20. <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, I don't know if he does. I'd have to, I have to read again on that one. I don't know if he does or not. I think he's got a couple, but he's like, I got to make some coin if I'm going to get out of here. So this is, and he's like, well, and it starts off and he's just like, who'd want to mess with these guys? And he's like, I think it'd be fun to mess with these guys. I should. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, dude, you just said not, no. When he turned back, the quarterstaff in both hands before him, Gowan and Galad were already waiting out where they had been practicing. A buzz rose from the accepted as they realized what was happening. The Aes Sedai watched in silence disapproving silence so who's what because i imagined it was just kind of them in the corner of an alley fucking with each other so oh sorry i guess i didn't do a good enough setup well no we're, we're working our way through it he's he's walked down and he's like he's kind of walking around the tower grounds it's like how the hell am i gonna get out of here and he hears all this noise and he's like what the fuck's going on out here goes walking over and it's all of the warders who are training Oh. And it's all of the Aes Sedai's that a lot of them don't have warders. And a lot of them are like novices and accepted. And they're watching because Gal, you know, the master head warder who's training people. And um, he's like, all right, I'll pay your wager. If you guys don't got enough guts to think you can take him, quit making excuses. Okay. And so he's in the practice yard. So ever, I mean, there's like, a, um, there's, you know, probably, you know, 50, 60 people so watching at least. there's a bunch of badass warders in training and a bunch of cute Aes Sedai's in training and <laughs> yeah that are fa- that are fawning over Galad because <laughs> yeah. he's supposed to be like the prettiest man ever that's all he's just he's so beautiful you like he takes your breath away just to look at him Matt's gonna suck that wind right out can't of wait to see who they cast for him it's gonna be great Taylor Lautner <laughs> it better be fucking dreamy that's all I gotta say the moment's warning was all Matt needed as Galad rushed at him, he slid his hands along the quarterstaff and pivoted. The end of the staff thudded into the tall man's ribs, bringing a grunt and a stumble. Matt let the staff bounce off Galad and spun, carrying it around just as Gowan came within range. The staff dipped, darted under Gowan's practice sword, and clipped his ankle out from under him. As Gowan fell, Matt completed the spin in time to catch Galad across his upraised wrist, sending his practice sword flying. Luck, stay with me. From the first blow, he knew that luck or skill or whatever had brought him this far was still there. And Matt pressed him, staff a blur. And Galad stepped back, stepped back again, wooden blade a thin shield against the quarterstaff. Hunger gnawed at Matt as if he had swallowed weasels. Sweat <laughs> rolled down into his eyes and his strength <laughs> so began great. to fade one of my favorites, leached dude. out with the sweat. With a roar, he threw all his reserves into one last surge. The quarterstaff flickered past Galad's sword and in quick succession struck knee, wrist, and ribs and finally thrust into Galad's stomach like a spear. With a groan, Galad folded over, fighting not to fall. 
The staff quivered in Matt's hands on the point of a final crushing thrust to the throat. Galad sank to the ground. Matt almost dropped the quarterstaff when he realized what he had been about to do. Win, not kill. Suddenly he realized that not only the Aes Sedai and Accepted were watching. <laughs> all practice, all learning had stopped. Warders and students alike stood watching him. The warder raised his voice to shout, Who was the greatest blade master of all time? From the throats of dozens of students came a masked bellow. Jerome, Gaidin. Yes, Hummer shouted, turning to make sure all heard. During his lifetime, Jerome fought over 10,000 times in battle and single combat. He was defeated once by a farmer with a quarterstaff. Remember that. Remember what you just saw. So what do you think, man? That's when I like feel like, dude, Matt's a bad dude, bro. <laughs> yeah, he just he's so tight. I mean, I guess for money, it makes sense. But yeah, he's just such a survivor and not like, uh, let's go to the go to the center of town and 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 show off. But like not really show off. But dude, he wants to be in a common room. He wants to be in a common room gambling and like dicing and drinking. That's what he wants to be doing all the time. Yeah. If it's like I'm fighting or fucking. Let's go. Yeah, that's fresh out of whiskey. So from now, I'm trying to like connect. First of all, like, I don't know if I see old Matt doing that scene. Like, I'm curious. See, here's the thing. Yeah. I disagree. And the reason why I started with this is because I wanted to lead into, first of all, where, you know, as soon as I get past this little thing is where you're at in the books and with what you've re- had in the books and what you've seen, like that you recognize, how do you like it? And then we'll we'll get into like predictions and stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, I just really think that that's where Matt season two arc is going to start. But that's new Matt. I keep thinking about it and I keep thinking about it and I keep and I I, I haven't seen I think he's going to kick around until they can get the dagger back to Tarvon and he's maybe only, instead of getting healed 3 times he's going to just get healed for the second time completely he's in Tarvon wandering around runs into probably maybe that might we get that may be where we get introduced to Elaine as well and I think that Egwen and Nynaeve will be going back to the tower at that time as well so, I mean, even that, even though that scene isn't till book three, I think that's going to get moved up to number two real quick. And so what do you think? Do you love Matt more after that? Is he bad dude or what? I do. I do. Like, <laughs> he's so gangster. He's such a gangster. Because I know he's a gambling man too. And, but like, like you said, I, I picture him, yeah, in the, in the taverns and stuff, gam, uh, gambling and stuff. But to see him like gambling basically with his life in a way, like they weren't going to kill him, but they were certainly going to make him a fool enough to 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 f- fuck his life up and they were just so pompous they just deserved to get their ass whipped and he just did it real real quick like may he make short work of them i was hoping to see um see what a couple of uh i was hoping there was more episode titles for next season yet and we could see one where titled like you know matt <laughs> matt's staff's a baller matt's back <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> um if you know what here i'll tell you what it is if you see an episode title named, I know what the episode title will be. If if it's if it's the focus of an episode, I'm gonna predict it. I'll tell you what it's gonna be right now. Come on, come on. It's gonna be either luck, time to toss the dice, or it's gonna be. Uh, it's like you know, like rec- it's it's not reconnaissance, but it's like you know, he's searching for a way out. I can't remember what it exactly is right now. I bet. I guess I just keep trying to think about how they're going to. Bring him back. Scouting and Discoveries. If that's the name of an episode, nah, I'm going to have a boner. Because like that's been, I think it's a good way to be like, okay, you can show the new dude like maybe just really haggard, like like he's on the verge of death, like Skeletor. And then they heal him and he looks a little bit different, but he's still Matt. And then, you know, you forget about it really quick because he goes out and kicks the shit out of these two pompous dicks. It's just one of the things, like if they leave that out, if there's not some version of that in the show... That'll be the first thing I get super disappointed about. But I also can't think of a way of really smashing back Matt because he blows the horn Oh, in the Great Hunt. And so he's attached to the horn. So I think they could potentially make that happen a little later because I don't know how they would get him to the parts of the world that he needs to be in time if they flipped those scenes. 
I'm sure they could do it. I mean, you know, they're writers. That's what they do. I'm not a writer, but um, I feel like I feel like that would be the 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 one of the best ways to bring him in in season two pretty quickly. You know, with a bang. While we got a little dead time, I, I found the the Wheel of Time origins, the legends and mythologies um, that inspired Robert Jordan is the new book that's going to be coming out. I think it comes out in this month sometime. It's a guy who, you know, has went through and literally kind of pulled from his inspirations and I think show how it relates to to what and it came out on the page. And I think it's really cool to see it come out on screen because the, the costumes and stuff is just, I just can't, I mean, I just can't wait to the second season for so many things there's locations and uh things that i feel like i feel like the second season has a potential to be freaking epic dude because i feel like they're gonna go i was saying a little bit last part i think they're gonna go like one and a half one and three quarters i think they'll end getting the tier when the lot or you know right when everybody starts to head to tier i don't know if they'll actually get there because i think that'll be a pretty banging kickoff point for season two and uh, that's when that's when matt that's when you really that you mean season three? Uh, yeah, right. The kickoff season three. Yeah. So have you got any further in your book in Eye of the yeah, World? Yeah, I'm about 10 hours in. I'm starting to cruise now. Like I said, I, I got really, really hung up on that first chapter. It's easy to get bogged down in the beginning. And then once the Trollocs show up on winter night, then it's like, whoosh. Well, and kind of like, you know, and with everything too, like I for whatever reason, I felt like I really needed to chew and digest that first because it was light years ahead of where we <clears throat> are on the show literally almost hmm. but yeah but now it's just like i can picture the characters so even if i miss a couple sentences like because i just i just need to get through it like and it's one of those things too where like i'll i'll listen to this book you know a couple times probably in the next f- f- five ten years so just getting getting it through um because i think i do want to start yeah have we talked about me should i hold off on the books a little bit to not get too far ahead just for sake of the podcast like i don't think i want to finish all 15 this summer <laughs> not that i could, I would race but... i would race to three okay until we get through season two okay cool i think that'll give you enough time to get through it and not you know want to rip your hair out <laughs> trying to just do it i don't want it to be a job i want because they are enjoyable yeah and so i think that if you're able to spread it out a little bit, I think it's cool. And because I just, I really think that you just what I've read places and people's kind of theories talk on Twitter and stuff like that. It's just, I really think that it's going to be a book and a half to two books per season, depending on which, which ones. With some, like, like you said, there's some slower books in there and those will probably be like, just like, you never know when they'll throw in a flash forward or a flash back of just that world building in the middle. I think what's, Gonna change a lot in the second season. I started thinking about this. Is like you get, I, or, or maybe I shouldn't say. I think I'm saying I'm wondering <laughs> more. Um, you'll notice maybe not even as. I guess now you notice it in the books. Like you really see each chapter. It's the way Game of Thrones is. It's like you get this, you know, main character's point of view. Oh yeah, um, and that's where you're seeing it from. Yeah. So you know that whole thing was from from Matt's point of view. That thing we just listened to. I wonder if they will do more of that. Like, here's parents' story from parents' point of view, or will they be continuing to tell the story from? I was reading that, like, you know, the majority of season one is kind of being the story being told through Lan and Moraine's eyes, and that's why there's stuff missing. Oh, you know, like you may you may see what Rand actually did uh, when he's just standing there holding the thing at Ishmael, other than just freeing him. You may see more things happen. Because you get his point of view later. I'm wondering if that's how they will do things. Like, like you get Rand's point of view when he's dragging his dad through the woods when he's shooting the bow and arrow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the first times that you get a point of view that it's not like a moraine and land that's unless they're seen, you know, kind of by themselves or just the two of them. Well, do you think they'll do, so are you saying like there'll be like whole whole Matt episodes, whole Rand episodes, whole... I feel like there will be or maybe, you know, like a, a quarter of the episode is where Rand's at right now. A quarter of the episode is where Matt and, and you know, if, yeah. you, know, you know, they, like I said, they cross paths, they join up. Matt kind of starts to form his own army just because people are like, hey, dude, you're cool. You never <laughs> lose. And you like to gamble and drink. Let's fucking go. And then they just, they kind of end up, you know, just keep, you know, Rebel Alliance. Here we go. It, I would be fine if they did that. 
but I, I feel like they're they've built a little bit more of an ensemble situation where they're gonna yeah move all five of the main characters forward every episode instead of like you know like you said like Game of Thrones like you just don't see a character for two episodes which is fine but I don't think this is gonna do that yeah because sometimes when you start to do that it's like well you know you know Lan and Moraine are here and I need even you know. If they don't separate that much, it's like there's I'm trying to think. It's like, you know, the one point Rand is by himself for a while and he's with only a couple of people, but it's like they get the horn. Yeah. And then as soon as they get back to the the actual world where they're from, they get to Karheen, it gets stolen again. And there's this big battle in Karheen, which that's one of the things that I predict slash really hope happens because it's some really cool stuff that happens in the city. There's like a festival going on and they kind of disguise Trollocs as like these giant puppets and then they attack the city <laughs> and there's more uh, there's more way gates and the ways in, in that. So I hope, I mean, that'll be cool too because I want to see all that shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, I am I am loving, loving the books. Like I'm, I'm really enjoying, like I s- said, now that I'm kind of, I have it on 1.2 times. So it's, it's, it's going fast. So I'm just like, it's going fast. Yeah. It's like, I'm, you know, it's like I'm watching it and it's just cruising. Yeah. Like I said, we're just about ready. I think we're going to leave the two rivers in the next chapter to what chapter am I? I think I'm on chapter 11. No. Um, yeah. I think leave takings is like 10 or something. Oh, no. I'm almost at the end of the uh, telling of the wheel. Nine. That's such a big deal in the books. And she's just like, she just heals him, right? Like, like you can see how she kind of goes back and forth for a second before she heals him in the books. Yeah. And she can tell, like, Rand's not going to leave if he's not okay. Yeah. So she's just like, fine, done. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, and I like in the show. That you have no idea what's like, coming. We have to go. Moraine is just healing motherfuckers. Like, it's not, we didn't have to waste 10 minutes with Rand. Yeah. Trying to, the, I think the only thing so far, I mean, I think, I, I, I think I know why they did it. I think I, I think it's, it, it makes better TV to have a bunch of wily teenagers who are excited to adventure instead of wasting time with people who just thought they were going to live in the two rivers for 60 years and die and that was going to be their life right and their idea of adventure was like oh this is crazy we're going to be gone for like a month yeah (laughs) and it's like they never some of them never go back home yeah yeah some of them go back to emensville but some of them never does home come back i mean this I don't think that's a big spoiler. Just do, do, do they rebuild? I guess they would have to, whether they rebuild it yeah, the way it they, was. Or, or they start. Oh, dude, what you think what happened is nothing compared to what what they bring. Pot on Fane becomes um, something that the chosen, the Forsaken, call the Renegade because he gets kind of possessed by the dagger and he's been changed. He can't channel anything, but he's been kind of changed by the Dark One, where he's got some kind of powers where he's he's something else. Yeah. At the uh, by by the time you get into the book, he's he's something else. Yeah. And he goes and he is like a double agent for the White Cloaks. <laughs> yeah. And he's I, like I, I he's corrupting that. all these White Cloaks while he's bringing more and more Trollocs to the Two Rivers. And Perrin goes back and they rebuild the Two Rivers. Ends up becoming like the town. I'm glad we didn't spend. You know, I'm glad they didn't stretch the first episode into two episodes, you know, by having like half an episode, just the uh, the fight at Rand's ran, ran and, and and then all this little ran. shit afterwards. Yeah, you're like, uh. I guess we kind of get it just by, you know, who they drag away. But like, I do wish that in the melee, they could have made it because Trollocs are just such nasty killers anyways. Like, I think it would have been good information to show that they were targeting like I in in my mind before the book or talking to you, I would be like Trollocs can't target anything. They're just fucking tornadoes and they may or may not hit their target. They really can't. There's some that are smart enough to kind of do it. But then. But the fact that they only, get up, attack, blood lust up. they only attack two farms, they only, you know, destroyed like three buildings like there was a it was a fairly targeted attack. That's that's where the fades come in. They're the brains. Like the one Trolloc is like Narg wait, Narg smart yes. in the book. He's like, they don't really cover, they don't really do that in the book, but he's like, no, and they I, don't do I that was in the smart. Show. I pretended to do, or they don't do that in the show. Yeah. He's like, I pretended to be dead. I knew you'd come back. Mm-hmm. And, and like, you know, that's like, that's like the high point of Trolloc intelligence. Yeah. You know? But it still shows so that they're like, they really, they're not totally 
mindless consumers. They're, they're pretty gnarly. Yeah, they're not zombies. I, I know they're not the, zombies, I know the fades, but they're driven by much more primal shit than that. Yeah, and I know the fades are pulling the strings, but the fact that they they can direct that aggression, I think, uh, yeah. would have been which w- it, yeah, it's as long as they're not too yeah. afraid, they will turn and run, or they'll they'll take down a fade too. You know, they'll turn around and sometimes <laughs> kill a fade that they're attacked to. I they kill kill them and then they all drop dead. Fades are weird to me. Are they created or are they born? They're actually birds. They are the offspring of Trollocs and humans. What? Yeah. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's correct. That's weird that they're Trolloc babies. <laughs> yeah, and then they're the, and that they're the ones who are in control, though. So they've got the death of a Trolloc, but the brains of a human. And as far as I know, I don't know if there's a sex, but as far as I know, all f- all fades seem to be male. Well, it's like a donkey. I haven't seen like a f- two. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It yeah, is two fades. Can it's sterile? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. They're definitely sterile, but I've never seen a, a, a what I what I would perceive to be a female fade. So I'll be curious if you get that in the show. You get something that's maybe obvious of a more like a female if they have male and female. I don't know, but they definitely can't have more babies. But um, so what are you thinking about now that you've got some stuff to compare the show to? I, are you thinking that they're they're doing a good job adapting it? Or are you thinking that maybe it's leaving a little bit or, or are you feeling it still? I think they're doing an amazing job so far. There's just there's a I, that's what I was hoping you'd say now that you know a little more. Is it cool to have faces to put to names? Because I am only starting to do that now. Um, and and uh, can I just tell you, I don't know what Donald Finn looks like. But I have this kind of blurry faced vision of him as Matt because I don't even look at it as Barney Harris anymore. I almost look at because you'll see as you go through the books, Matt's a little annoying at first. Like he's kind of a whiny punk. (laughs) It gets weird, especially after he steals the dagger, you know, but then after he gets healed, like, dude, he's just a G. Yeah, I haven't gotten to know. That's the weirdest thing is that I haven't got I've gotten to know the towns, the townsmen really well that I never met in the movie. But I they have spent no time with Matt or Perrin in the book. Yeah. As of right now. Like I'm a third of the way through the book. I don't know when you get Perrin and Matt point of view, maybe not till book two. I can't remember, but uh, I think there's probably some before then because there's like Perrin and a Gwen get once. Oh yeah. No, once you get Shadar Logoth, that's when you start getting the POV from the separate characters as opposed to like the first part of the book, I think until now is like basically Moraine and, and land for the most part. Well, and they just don't even come in contact, whether it's their POV or not. Like Rand's just yeah, he's he hasn't spent any time. He's spent all of his time on his fucking on his stupid days. No wonder he's called a sheep herder. Fucking spends all his time on that farm. Yeah, he's no one. That's, that's a, I swear to God, I better hear someone call him sheep herder. I better hear someone say blacksmith. I love show land more than book land. I'm really glad Me too. he's not a dick. Yeah, I just yeah, and he's not he's not a dick, dude. He really isn't. He's just like I don't know if you're going to live the next twenty four hours. It's like a, the new guy in war. He's yeah. just oh, he's hard and he has a mission, and that's why I was talking about once they get to Shinar and and Rand comes back from the Eye of the World, he really takes him under his wing. They start training with the sword. That's where the you know he starts calling him sheep herder, but like where he calls it like sarcastically at first because he doesn't want him to learn his name. Yeah. It becomes like a term of endearment. Same with Perry and with the blacksmith because he really kind of helps them man up. Bran especially, like between Tam and Lan, like those are his two main like mentor father figures. I hope that we end up having to do this for eight years because you'll go through and re-listen and re-listen. And I read really fast. I pick up more nuance listening to it. And there are things that like people still like, like have you, hey, who killed so-and-so? I still do not understand. <laughs> and they'll be like, well, there was these three passages that explain it perfectly. And they're dead ass right. But it's like, ah, uh, so I better be fucking Columbo to pick up on this shit. Well, now that I know people have like, taken out excerpts and put music to like the the passages that the 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 spokes in the wheel pass i'll call them spokes in the wheel motherfucker 
That's what they are. Passages yeah. from the book. Threads in the pattern. <laughs> Threads in the pattern. Smoke, spokes in the wheel. Whatever you want to say. It's all good. So a, as as usual, we are our hour is flying by. So I want to make sure you get to what is as much as we could do this for three hours. We got to make sure and keep our hopper full for next time. We can do a couple. I have a quarter of a page is all I've gotten, bro. So we're good. <laughs> oh, uh, one other thing before we go. The effects studio I was talking about last episode is pre-viz viz effect studio if anybody wants to look up what those weaves looked like before they changed them and went to white all right until next time this has been thank the light i'm desmond that's fatty go to parse wolf brothers at parse on twitter send us some emails at thank the light at gmail.com that is thank the light at gmail.com and give us your thoughts predictions feelings uh love letters recipes whatever you got send them there <laughs> <laughs> more like turd crapley anyone who's listening we could the next three to 30 episodes is gonna be shit like this <laughs> We're just so let us know what you want to talk about talking about wheel of time baby i talk a lot i'm gonna say what i want to see i'm gonna try not to ruin stuff for people who listen in for you <laughs> I'm trying to tease it as best I can without ruining it. I think it's, yeah, I'll, I'll try to find the line, but I think like, cause these episodes, like they're just a drop in the bucket and then fucking four years from now, when they actually show it in an episode, it'll be brand new again. <laughs> so I think we can just have some fun talking about it. And yeah, that's why I said, go hard until, you know, Go go hard until you get through Dragon Reborn, and then you can take a fucking break. Because I really think that four and oh man, I don't know, four and five are really important. And four and five are really important, and after that, I think they're gonna mash a lot of shit up. But it's like I feel like I just was thinking about the, the math thing, and I really feel like that's gonna jump way ahead, and some shit's gonna get rearranged. But whatever, we'll see. I'm excited. Fuck yeah! Talk. See you next week, brother. I'll talk to you on Twitter. See y'all next week. Go ahead and delete this part. Mixed and edited by Desmond McNeese for We Mixed It, LLC. Go to whatsoundsawesome.com.